The easiest way to pearl ever. Hi everyone, Norman here. Please excuse the clickbaity title, but I feel just so, so many people struggle with pearling. Their knit stitches come easy as a breeze, but then these endless rows of pearl stitches feel like such a drag. Are you one of them? Well, then this video was made for you because it's all about more efficient and easier pearling. Now I need to be honest with you, I don't think there is the most efficient or the best way to pearl. Cancel that thought. The second someone claims to know that, that is the very second they lost my trust. So rather than just showing you what I believe is the best way to pearl for me, I want to focus on showing you 10 fundamentally different ways to pearl so you get to pick the technique that you feel works best for you, your preferences, your body and your projects. I'm going to go super slowly so you can knit along. Try out each technique and then focus on the ones you feel are the most promising and take it from there. Let's dive right into it. So we are going to start frustratingly simple with the continental textbook pearl stitch but we are definitely going to cover different knitting styles later on in this video so watch all the way to the end. To pearl the continental way, wrap the yarn around your pinky finger once or twice depending on how slippery your yarn is. It's very hot outside here today so I'm just going to do once. Then. Bring the yarn around the back of your hand like this and pick up your working needles. Then bring the yarn to the front if it isn't already there and enter the stitch from right to left. You could also say from back to front. Then wrap the yarn around the needle counterclockwise and pull through. And this is the very technique that has so many people frustrated because as you insert, wrap and try to pull through, the yarn slips off. To make it work, you have to twist your wrists a bit to be able to pull the yarn through. Let's do that again. Insert, wrap and then twist both wrists to pull through. Insert, wrap, twist, pull through. You can also only twist the right wrist, so wrap and then pull through like this. Then you will have to twist quite a bit more. So decide if you want to twist both wrists against each other or just one. But you have to go really far to be able to do that. You could also use these prim ergonomic needles I showed you in my last video because these teardrop shaped tips here really help you pulling the stitch through. They act like a little mini crochet hook if you will. So they can be a very nice choice for beginners. The next method to purl is the double wrap method. So it's a very simple variation of the first method. So the yarn is in front, you insert from right to left, wrap counterclockwise, but now you wrap twice. And then you guide the yarn through with your thumb. Let's do that one more time. Insert, wrap twice and guide the yarn through with your thumb. Insert, wrap twice, pull through. You will notice that the stitches here on the right needle can't be too far down the needle otherwise you won't be able to pull the yarn through. So you kind of need to bunch them up or well not bunch them up but they need to be a little bit closer to the tip. What I really like about this method is that this movement is very efficient. Your thumb here is quite efficient because that is basically the movement you need to do to move the uh, stitches forward anyway. Of course you will have to twist your right uh, wrist quite a bit. However the left wrist almost remains stable. 
If you don't like the double wrap, you can also anchor the yarn with your right index finger as you pull through. Let's show you how to purl in that manner. So you insert, wrap and then here. You anchor the yarn with your index finger and pull through. Insert, wrap, anchor, pull through. So by anchoring or securing the stitch a little bit, you don't have to twist all the way around. You can get away with twisting the wrist just a little bit. Of course, you will have to uh, lift your index finger, uh, finger to secure things. So maybe for you, this works better. So you can basically before we moved the stitches forward with the thumb, but you can of course also do it with your index finger. The fourth method I want to show you is my preferred version, but that doesn't mean it's the fastest way to purl nor the most efficient one. It just works very well for me. So just like before you tension the yarn in the exact same way. You wrap the working yarn around your pinky finger once or twice, bring it across the back of your hand and pick up your knitting needles like this. See? And then you insert from right to left with yarn held in front, wrap the yarn around the needle counterclockwise, and then you use your middle finger to push the working yarn towards you. So like this, and then you pull through. Let's do that one more time. Insert, and you don't actually need to wrap the yarn. You can do that with your middle finger. So that's the way you or I purl or like to purl. And what I like about this method is, and you can see this, I barely need to twist my wrist. So I don't need to do all that. Something my wrists don't agree with. So in this manner, I can avoid this and purl without having to twist my wrists all that much. Just a little, just a little, a tiny little wrist twist there. I really like this method because it's very, very versatile and it seems to work very well with my body and you can actually go pretty fast with it. I have a full video on purling faster here on YouTube as well using this exact method. I'll link it to you up in here. Quite a few continental knitters tension their yarn with their index finger. So they wrap the yarn around their index finger once or twice and purl like this. So they wrap and then they do the same pushing motion, but they do it with their index finger. So they push the yarn forward with their index finger. It's the exact same context, just a different finger. And you will notice that um, one or the other will work best for you. What makes this method quite nice is that it only works if your index finger is rather close to your knitting needle and not overstretched. If it's stretched like that, you probably won't be able to make it work. So it needs to be close to your knitting needle. And that is always a good uh, thing whenever we are talking about knitting ergonomics. One note here, you can also combine tensioning uh, the working yarn with your index finger and the double wrap method. Or you could do the index finger method. So both works, as you can see, it's just whatever you prefer and something to toy around with. I showed you a couple of different methods and you can use or pick the one that seems to work well for you. The last continental pearl technique I want to show you is the 
thumb pearl method. So a continental pearl stitch goes against the grain, so to speak. And that's why you have to tension the yarn in a way that you can guide the yarn through and catch it at a nice angle. And you can do that with your thumb as well. There are two main versions. So as you enter, you push the yarn forward with your thumb. See what I'm doing here? I'm getting behind the yarn and pushing the yarn forward. Getting behind, pushing the yarn forward. Some people will constantly hold the yarn forward with their thumb like this. I can't make that work. You probably need a knitting sheet or so but some make it work. You can also push the yarn down with your thumb. Push down as you pull through. For me, this second method is inefficient to a point where it feels very awkward, but quite some seem to enjoy it and they push the yarn down and not forward with their thumb. Oops, split the yarn here. Always a possibility with, but that's why I do it like this. But we are going to finish the yarn as a row pushing down. My little swatch here is slowly growing and there are probably five more ways to make a continental pearl stitch easier to knit for some I haven't mentioned yet. But I want to focus on a couple of different styles here as well. And the very first that comes to my mind is called combination knitting. This style combines elements from Eastern knitting with continental knitting. Sort of both, uh, best of both worlds. So you can tension the yarn the same way or really any way you like with your left hand. And then you enter the stitch from right to left as well. But instead of wrapping the yarn around counterclockwise, you go clockwise and just scoop the yarn through. So see, you just scoop the yarn through. Very, very easy. Very, very simple. Oops. When you say that that has to happen, of course, very simple. You scoop the yarn through through just like this. Basically, this is the pearl equivalent to continental picking or where you just knit the knit stitches by scooping the yarn through. And here you get the luxury of doing the exact same thing on the pearl side instead of the knit side. I say instead because combination purling comes with a couple of drawbacks and one of them is as you turn your work around you will notice that all your purl stitches are twisted. They are mounted uh, on the needles incorrectly with the leading leg here in the back and not in front. As a remedy, you have to knit all these twisted purl stitches through the back loop in the next row and this will untwist them. But since they are wide open on this side, this is actually fairly easy. You can enter these knit stitches very, very fast and efficiently. So it doesn't really feel like knitting through the back loop where you sometimes have to do well you kind of have to fish for the entrance here it's very simple now i do caution you to switch to combination knitting on a whim a lot of increases and decreases like knit two together and purl two together are derived on, from knit and purl stitches. And this means you cannot simply purl the easy way and then knit your SSKs the same way as before. You have to adapt that as well and ultimately every pattern is explicitly not written for combination knitting. Of course, you could, you, I mean, you can just use this for those easy patterns and plain stockinette stitch as well. 
there are many different knitting traditions around the world and Scandinavia is certainly one of the more interesting ones when it comes to purling. With Norwegian purling, you hold the yarn in the back and not in front. And we are going to approach this step by step. So in the first step, I just want to show you the motions. So we are still sticking to the continental way to tension the yarn. So the yarn stays in back and then you enter the stitch from right to left. And now you reach around, grab the yarn, reach back and pull the yarn through towards the back and pull the stitch off the needle. Let's do that one more time. Yarn stays in back, enter, go all the way around, go back, pull through and slip off. Yarn stays in back, reach around, twist back, pull through, drop. So it's a kind of weaving motion. As a continental knitter, you kind of want to bring the yarn forward, but you don't. If you would, you would end up with a yarn over you don't want. So you kind of need to get accustomed to that. Now, most people in Norway wouldn't hold the yarn in the left hand like this. Uh, you already have to do a lot of twisting with your right hand or right wrist. So if you also put a more stress on the index finger and the pinky finger, that's probably not a good combination or problem. Well, try it out. But they will typically hold a pick up the yarn like this. So just wrap around the index finger and uh, hold it here with the um, other fingers and then keep things very, very close um, to the um, uh, knitting needle. And then you enter, go around, pick the yarn, pull through, enter, go around, pull through. So basically the left hand does nothing. So you try to keep it in a relaxed or near relaxed position and the right hand does all the work. Now I absolutely have to stress that I am not the master of Norwegian knitting. If you are interested in this style, I kindly do a little bit more research. You will notice that your gauge will be a lot looser because as you twist and twist back, you are stretching out that stitch quite a bit. And you might notice if you hold the yarn in the traditional way, and so in a closed position, then it's kind of difficult to pull that stitch tight afterwards. So your gauge will probably be a lot looser. Again, I caution you to switch on a whim. For many, Norwegian purling comes as a blessing. At the same time, do consider that um, this closed position of the hand and the necessity to overextend stitches will make complicated stitches. Say things like purl uh, three together. Very, very difficult, if not impossible. And uh, sometimes it will require some thought or some time to get used to the new ways to decrease or increase in Norwegian knitting. And of course, for people like me, all that extra movement of the right wrist is actually painful in the long run. What if you could avoid purling altogether? Wouldn't that be fun? Well, in a way you can. Teach yourself knitting backwards and you might never have to turn your work around anymore. So normally we would have to turn the work around, but now we don't. Instead, we re-enter that stitch from left to right. And then I use my thumb and my index finger to wrap the yarn around the needle and lift the stitch over. 
Let's do that one more time. So enter from left to right, wrap around, lift over. Enter from left to right, lift over. Enter from left to right, lift over. And in that manner, you create pearl stitches as well, but you knit backwards and stay on the right side. With quite a bit of practice, you can teach yourself um, continental backwards flicking. So you enter, then you bring the needle here to the center and then do the wrapping with the left index finger. Enter, flick to the middle, wrap around. Enter, flick to the middle, wrap around. And in that manner, you can avoid purling altogether. Now, the flicking method is arguably very, very advanced and difficult. So as a beginning, you might want to do the wrapping method. I have a full video on backward knitting here on YouTube. Uh, check it out if you are interested. I link it to you up in here. Again, be careful. This works Great. This method really works great for plain stock and its stitch work flat. It won't help you with ribbing and it won't help you with complicated stitch patterns either because, well, I mean, you could teach yourself um, uh, to learn, I don't know, uh, backwards SSK or so or backward yarn over and so on. You could work on that, sure. Um, but it will be very difficult and you're basically learning how to knit twice. And on top of that, it will be quite a bit difficult to get your tension right. So uh, be, uh, be, be, be very careful. I personally love it for the bubble stitch where you only have those three or four stitch rows and you don't have to turn your work around. Other than that, I personally don't mind turning my work around and uh, purling, I don't mind at all either. But maybe for you, this technique works. For consistency, I would also like to mention English throwing. I say consistency because purling while tensioning, oops, tensioning the yarn here with your right hand probably would deserve its own video and I'm not the person to shoot that. Still, if you have problems with your left hand and neither Norwegian purling nor combination knitting didn't do the job either, well, consider looking into English throwing and later on flicking or lever knitting. So, you tension the yarn with your right hand wrap it around the pinky finger and pick the yarn up like this. The yarn is in front and then you enter from right to left and wrap the yarn around your needle counterclockwise pull through. Let's do that again. Enter, wrap around, pull through. And what makes this way of purling rather easy is that here the yarn is tensioned in this direction. So you can pull the stitch quite e through quite easily and you never risk, um, you never risk uh, letting the stitch slip off. It never slips off or shouldn't really. Later on, you can progress to English flicking. That's why I said continental flicking. Typically, this um, term is a research for English knitting, where you never let go of the knitting needle and do the wrapping with the, and I can't do it, and here um, in this position, uh, where you do the wrapping uh, without ever letting go. So I guess for an English knitter, my way of uh, purling that way 
is almost even painful to watch but I do have to say it was a style that I never really focused on because it involves so much uh, extra motions with the right hand which is not good for me but I know a lot of people are exactly the other way around so that is another technique uh, English uh, flicking and lever knitting that you might uh, want to look into I am not the one to teach you here at the end I want to well spill some words of wisdom first of all the very reason why a purl stitch is more difficult than a knit stitch has to do with the fact that they are mirror images Think of it as driving backwards. Essentially, a purl stitch is nothing else but trying to achieve a knit stitch from the wrong side. So it's in its nature to be more difficult or awkward. And this means you have to be patient and you have to practice. In that context, I do want to mention that as I started out, I felt quite differently. Initially, I hated purling because the way I was taught didn't work for me and my body. And over the years, I basically came out with the way I purl now myself. I toyed around until I found a technique that works for me. It felt a little bit like cheating, like you weren't supposed to push the yarn forward like that, but that's just rubbish. And if you care to ask around, then you will find out that a lot of knitters did basically the same. And interestingly enough, a lot of them arrived at the same technique independently. So I do hope that this video will facilitate this process for you because I didn't have these resources or the resources you have today when I started out. Knit some swatches using the different techniques I showed you in this video or maybe just the ones you think, well, that might work for me. Maybe do some further research and look at other um, people here on YouTube and check out how they purl. Then listen to your body but also don't shy away from combining and adjusting the different ways to purl. Sometimes all it takes is a slightly different way to tension or hold the yarn. And yes, it can be these simple adjustments because purling is always against the grain. So if your tension is not ideal, it's always going to be difficult. Also, make sure that you start out with standard sheep wool or some very basic yarn. If the yarn is too slippery or too fussy, you are making the whole exercise needlessly frustrating because you will be focusing on maintaining an even tension rather than learning, on, uh, learning a new technique. If the tension is a little bit too loose, you are never going to pull the purl stitch through. You are going against the grain. And if it's too tight, you will constantly fuss around and try to gather more yarn, readjust your tension, and that's going to be very frustrating as well. And last but not least, if you found a way to purl that works very well for you, don't run around the internet trying to convince everyone that this is the best way to purl. There is a big, big difference between saying, if you have problems, try Norwegian purling. It worked very well for me. And Norwegian purling is the best and easiest way to purl. It simply isn't and it can push a beginner with a different body and different preferences in a totally wrong and frustrating direction. Plus it's belittling the accomplishments of millions of knitters who were and are perfectly fine with their continental English or Eastern pearl stitch. Anyway. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching, comment with your questions and of course don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting or rather purling and enjoy the rest of your day.